Anthony Kevin Dungey was born on October 6, 1955, and raised in Jackson, Michigan, to Wilbur Dungey born in 1926 and died in 2004, a science professor at Jackson College, and Cleo May Dungey born in 1920 and died in 2002, who taught Shakespeare at Jackson High School. Wilbur Dungey served as a pilot in the Army Air Forces during World War II with the famed Tuskegee Airmen. After graduating from Parkside High School in 1973, Dungey played college football at the University of Minnesota and was the Gophers' most valuable player at quarterback in 1975 and 1976. In 1977, he was awarded the Big Ten Medal of Honor, recognizing one student-athlete from the graduating class of each Big Ten member school for demonstrating joint athletic and academic excellence throughout their college career. Anthony Kevin Dungey is a former American football safety and coach who served as a head coach in the National Football League, NFL, for 13 seasons with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Indianapolis Colts. His teams became perennial postseason contenders under his leadership, missing the playoffs only twice with Tampa Bay. He led the Colts to victory in Super Bowl 41, making him the first African American head coach to win the Super Bowl. Dungey began his head coaching tenure in 1996 with the Buccaneers, a franchise regarded as one of the league's worst. Through implementation of the Tampa 2 defensive scheme, he brought new success to the Buccaneers, leading them to four playoff appearances in six seasons. He was fired after the 2001 playoffs due to frequent postseason struggles, but is credited with constructing the team that won Super Bowl 37 the following year. After his departure from Tampa Bay, he served as the Colts head coach for seven seasons, qualifying for the playoffs in each. His greatest success occurred with the Colts Super Bowl winning season in 2006, the franchise's first in over three decades and the first since relocating to Indianapolis. He retired from coaching following the 2008 season. Since retiring, Dungey has served as an analyst on NBC's Football Night in America. He is also the national spokesman for the fatherhood program All Pro Dad. He was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 2016. Tony Dungy stands at a height of 6 feet or 1.83 meters. About Tony Dungy personal life. Dungy is an evangelical Christian and at one point in his coaching career considered leaving football for the prison ministry. Throughout his career, he has remained involved with community service organizations. Dungey is married to Lauren Dungey. The couple have 11 children, 3 biological children, and 8 adopted children. Their oldest son died by suicide at age 18, outside of Tampa in 2005. Dungey's tenure in Tampa Bay as the head coach of the Buccaneers brought greater attention to his personal accomplishments outside of sports. He has been active in many community service organizations in the cities in which he has coached. While in Tampa Bay, Dungey worked as a public speaker for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes and Athletes in Action. He began a mentoring program for young people called Mentors for Life and provided Buccaneers tickets for the participants. He also supported other charitable programs in the area such as Big Brothers slash Big Sisters, Boys and Girls Club, the Prison Crusade Ministry, Foster Parenting Organizations, and Family First. He continues to assist Big Brothers slash Big Sisters and the Boys and Girls Club in Indianapolis. He also supports the Black Coaches Association National Convention and Indiana Black Expo. After Michael Sam, an openly gay player, was drafted by the St. Louis Rams in the 2014 NFL Draft, Dungey said he would not have drafted Sam, saying, Not because I don't believe Michael Sam should have a chance to play, but I wouldn't want to deal with all of it. The comment drew criticism from some who viewed it as homophobic. Following a backlash, Dungey clarified his remarks, saying that he gave an honest answer to a question and that his concern would be with media coverage over Sam if he had been the player's coach. Dungey has also expressed opposition to same-sex marriage. In 2023, Dungey shared, and later deleted and apologized for sharing, the litter boxes and school's hoax on his Twitter account. The act drew a rebuke from an NBC Sports spokesperson and drew attention to past anti-LGBTQ statements by Dungey, but the network kept Dungey on his regularly scheduled broadcast assignments. Dungey is also opposed to abortion, and he served as a keynote speaker at the 2023 March for Life. On September 6th, 
2007, the Indianapolis Star reported that the Davy Brown Index, DBI, an independent celebrity rating service for advertisers, placed Dungy in the top 15 of the 900 actors, musicians, TV personalities, and sports celebrities it ranks for overall appeal, putting him on a level with actors such as Tom Hanks and Morgan Freeman. Among sports figures, he ranks second to Hank Aaron. On February 27, 2008, Indiana Wesleyan University honored Dungy in a ceremony where he was inducted into IWU Society of World Changers. Dungy also received an honorary doctorate of humane letters from the university. Since retirement, Dungy has become an informal mentor to the formerly suspended NFL player Michael Vick, counseling him during his incarceration, serving as his advocate and trying to get a team to have him on the roster. The Philadelphia Eagles later signed Vick to the team. Tony Dungy has also made significant contributions to philanthropic causes. Tony and his wife, Lauren Dungy, extend their love for family beyond their biological children. Through the Dungy Family Foundation, they focus on improving the lives of children in need. Their initiatives include mentoring programs, education, and community support, positively impacting countless lives. Tony Dungy actively participates in charitable endeavors. Beyond coaching and writing, he has been involved with various organizations, including All Pro Dad, a fatherhood-focused program, Big Brothers Big Sisters, a mentoring organization and boys and girls club supporting youth development after retiring from coaching dungji embraced the flexibility that retirement afforded him he dedicated himself to charitable causes particularly those focused on children families education and his christian faith his foundation's work reflects his commitment to making a positive impact in these areas Tony Dungy's journey exemplifies how success can be leveraged to benefit others, and his philanthropic efforts continue to inspire many. About Tony Dungy coaching career After being cut by the New York Giants in training camp before the 1980 season, Dungy returned to Minnesota as defensive backfield coach. He took the same position with the Steelers in 1982, and was promoted in 1984 to defensive coordinator. Following a 5-11 season in 1988, Steelers owner Dan Rooney forced head coach Chuck Knoll to make changes to his coaching staff, which included demoting Dungy back to defensive backs coach. Dungy became an NFL head coach when he was hired by Rich McKay to reform the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a team then well known for its lack of success, on January 22, 1996. Dungy installed his version of the cover two defense with defensive coordinator Monty Kiffin with a few new wrinkles. The result was the now famous Tampa 2, though Dungy openly admitted it was based on concepts he had picked up from his days in Pittsburgh. On January 22, 2002, Dungy was hired as head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, a team that at the time was very potent offensively, but very weak defensively. He installed his Tampa 2 defense immediately and continued to retool the Colts' defense to his liking during his tenure. After joining the Colts, Dungy left the high-powered offense previously installed there by Jim Mora, and both playing style and in personnel, virtually unchanged. Dungy was reunited with Tom Moore, who was retained as offensive coordinator. Moore and Dungy had previously worked together at Minnesota and Pittsburgh. On offense, Tony Dungy's strategy involved a conservative, ball-control offense based primarily around running the ball and short, high-percentage passes when he was at Tampa Bay. At Indianapolis, he inherited and kept the offense designed by offensive coordinator Tom Moore because the offense was in the hands of someone he knew and trusted. Dungy stresses that coaches are essentially teachers. His protege, Lovey Smith, observed, We talked about how to do it, being a teacher instead of screaming and yelling, all that stuff. I think as you look to young coaches coming up in the ranks, a lot of us have a picture of how a coach is supposed to be, how he is supposed to act. And I think what Tony Dungy showed me is you don't have to act that way. Dungy opposes the use of replay review in the NFL. In 1997, after a failed vote by NFL owners to reinstate instant replay, Dungy said that he would have favored replay if it were applicable to all calls and if it were not associated with the team's timeouts. The Tampa Bay Times described Dungy as vehemently opposed to replay in 2003 after the league had resumed using it. 
NBC Sports hired Dungey in 2009 as a broadcast analyst for programming related to Sunday Night Football. Dungey was hired at the same time as Rodney Harrison, and the two have appeared with other analysts on Football Night in America, NBC's pregame show for SNF. In addition to his studio analyst duties, Dungey has joined Mike Tirico in the broadcast booth for live action of Thanksgiving Day games. He called the Jaguars Chargers wildcard playoff game in January 2023 with Al Michaels. The broadcast attracted criticism from fans who felt that Michaels and Dungey were not energetic enough. Michaels defended the broadcast, calling the criticism that he had read internet compost. In August 2007, President George W. Bush appointed Dungey a member of the President's Council on Service and Civic Participation. The 25-member council represents leaders from government, business, entertainment, athletics, and nonprofit organizations committed to growing the spirit of service and civic participation. The two-year appointment requires attendance at two in-person meetings per year and quarterly phone conversations with assigned committees. After receiving the call from President Bush, Dungey remarked it was something that was really hard to believe. Certainly, when you go into football coaching, you're not expecting to get presidential appointments to anything. Dungey's memoir, Quiet Strength, The Principles, Practices, and Priorities of a Winning Life, was released on July 10, 2007 and reached number one on the hardcover nonfiction section of the New York Times bestseller list on August 5th. 2007 and again on September 9, 2007. Tyndall House Publishers said it was the first NFL-related book ever ranked number one. When asked why he wrote Quiet Strength, Dungey said, about Tony Dungey House. Tony Dungey, the former head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, has made his off-season home in Tampa, Florida for the past 25 years. He resides there with his wife, Lauren, and their 11 children, a mix of three biological children and eight adopted children. Tampa, being the largest city in the Tampa Bay region, provides a comfortable and welcoming environment for the Dungey family. Additionally, Tony Dungey also has a house in Carmel, Indiana, where he served as the Indianapolis Colts head coach. His home in Carmel reflects his successful career in football and his commitment to family life. Tony Dungy boasts an estimated net worth of around $14 million. Thanks so much for watching our video. Please like, share to your friends, and also subscribe to our channel.